Hi everybody, my name is Petri Tapio. I work as a professor at Finland Futures Research Center. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, futures research methods. This is an overview on the subject and on the field of future studies method. The first thing to understand is that there is no single generally accepted framework for futures research methods, how they should be mapped and how they should be related to each other. And I will give you three ways which hopefully will increase your understanding of the field as a whole. Uh, the first one uh, is a dimension or a continuum from the more formal to more heuristic methods. And the second one is describing the methods in terms of four dimensions. I will show you the foresight diamond uh, telling you about the creativity, emphasis of the creativity, uh, evidence, expertise and participation which are uh, key issues in future research methods. And then the third framework describes the phase of the research process where this particular method could mostly contribute. Okay, this is the first one of the three. Uh, we start from more formal to more intuitive methods. Uh, the Perhaps most formal type of method is the deterministic mathematical modeling, which is used to produce a business as usual or a baseline forecast of the, uh, let's say, the trying to find out the most probable future. Sometimes it includes also a little sensitivity analysis of, issue, of variables which are the most um, crucial to the development of the topic. What if models are the next ones and here you change some parameters and you make a, a different scenarios of the future with mathematical modeling. Still heavily dependent on uh, earlier data on the subject. Cross impact analysis uh, is used, uh, is a more heuristic one where you are defining with expert, within an expert group the interrelationships between issues re relevant to the, uh, to the subject. And Delphi method is an, also an expert-based method. Uh, it uh, includes several rounds of questionnaires uh, for an expert panel. And the, the panelists will first answer a questionnaire of the future of a topic and then uh, the results will be given fed back to the panel and then they will actually uh, start while they look at each other's answers then they reconsider their own statements. Morphological analysis also many times uh, described as futures table especially by Finnish scholars. Uh, it describes the, uh, the future of the organizational environment in a table like form. Causal layered analysis is an even more intuitive, rather much more intuitive method than the uh, ones above it. Uh, and it's a framework which interprets qualitative research material in certain layers of uh, reality, the litany level, the systemic level, the worldview level, and then the uh, on metaphor or mythical level. Futures workshop instead is a problem solving uh, method, uh, participatory, uh, very heuristic, no external data from the process, but just the people who come and gather around in a face to face workshop. This is one way to look at the methods. I will show you an, a couple of other. This is the foresight diamond uh, developed by Rafael Popper. Uh, do not confuse him with the philosopher Karl Raimund Popper. Uh, uh, here we have four dimensions in which uh, the future studies methods are mapped onto. 
how much creativity is needed, how much evidence is needed, how much interaction there is, and how much expertise is needed in order to carry out the exercise. Uh, I will not go through in detail all the methods presented here. You might notice that there are many methods which are not specifically features research methods, but just social scientific methods in general, like uh, uh, surveys, for example, or citizen panels, or um, perhaps brainstorming techniques. I think it's important, however, to and there's been a lot of criticism to the foresight uh, diamond framework, but not very much of better solutions. So I think this is always good to remember, and it tells you the story in a certain perspective. The understanding the dimensions and their relevance, I think, is more important than the actual positions or the methods within the framework. This relates to something that I will tell you in the next lecture. Okay, the third one is then uh, you completely different point of view. Uh, you look at the research process where you gather research data and then you analyze the data, you organize it and then you present the results. And future studies methods can also be um, presented this way. Which aspect of the, uh, of the, of the research process is emphasized with particular method. The Delphi method uh, and the Futures Workshop, they are methods uh, distinctly focused on uh, uh, data collection. And if, especially if you look at the international literature on the topic, you will find that uh, most papers talk a lot about or tell you a lot about how material should be gathered, what kind of expert panel should be uh, constructed or invited uh, to participate, what kind of questions should you pose, and uh, how the feedback uh, system should go on. But not much what to do with the data gathered. Uh, from the previous list, I would say the cross-impact analysis is essentially a data analysis method. Then you might look at the morphological analysis, which is perhaps more for data organization and perhaps also data presenting the results as images of the future or scenarios. Scenarios uh, are put here to the final version or final phase because scenarios, making scenarios is not a particular method, but it's actually more like an approach as you might find in Sirka Heidener's lecture. Um, backcasting is something which where you go for, you define a preferred future state and then you find the different paths to this uh, preferred future state. CLA is also on the uh, kind of analyzing but it's also data organizations and you produce images of the future so it's also a little bit like uh, uh, result representing uh, tool. The first of these three uh, ways to look at the field is made by me uh, and it's rather in line with the normal type of literature that is told about future studies. The second one, as I mentioned, by Rafael Popper. The third one is made principally by Markus Winnery, a Finnish scholar, futurist, and I have helped him a little bit or I usually keep adding the stars to this table and Marcus will delete the stars that I have added. Okay, the main points for this clip. Uh, there's no agreement on how futures research methods are understood as a field, as a whole. Uh, then the, that the choice of a method has to be in line with the research objective. You, choose, you don't just first choose a method which looks nice and fancy, but instead you look at your research question. What do you think is important in this particular issue that you are studying? And only after that 
you will decide the method. And also it's important to notice that methods do not think. Thinking is always your job. And that's it. I will talk to you a little bit more about the usage of the methods in the next lecture.